I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. Today we want to talk about some new features that are in the cloud or recently GA'd features and these are things that uh, are, are new technologies or improvements of existing technologies that we want to talk about because these are these are kind of very relevant right now and, and there's a lot of conversation happening with them. So one of those is a feature called Azure Files Sync. And Azure File Sync is really the next evolution of file services. And it is something that I personally have been working with for a little while now. I'm pretty excited about it. So let's just jump right in. So let's start off in our documentation page and go to Products, Storage, and File Storage. So in Azure, Azure Files is built on top of Azure Storage. So storage in the cloud just basically is different ways of storing and presenting that data. Things like disks, uh, regular files, blobs, uh, which could be uh, files that you have in the cloud. It could be diagnostic data, um, unstructured data like in tables, messages, in queues, and all of these things are, are basically you storing your data in the cloud. So Azure Files in particular is built on the SMB 3.0 protocol and it is basically a file share that is in the cloud. It can be mapped to your client devices or your server devices and of course there's uh, some some requirements and prerequisites so uh, you got to be able to communicate on SMB 3 for one and the benefits of using a cloud-based file share instead of a normal file share like we've been using in enterprises for years they are listed here on our page uh, as key benefits and features of why you would want to use this service basically it amounts to this if you have all of that data stored on a server, for example, you've got a server and that file server has got, uh, let's say, 10 terabytes of data on it. So you have to back that thing up. You've got to maintain it. You've got to patch it. You've got to manage all of the connections, all the permissions, all the quotas. You've got to take care of all of that stuff. And that takes time and effort. Now, if you only have one server, then that's also not good because now you're not highly available. What happens if that server is down? What happens if something's going wrong with it? So you logically have more than one file server. And now if you have more than one file server and they all share the same data, now you have to sync that data across multiple systems. So you can either do that by having a really expensive SAN behind it, and the SAN really has the storage and you're just presenting that to the servers, or you're using something like DFS that's going to sync all of the servers, so you make a change over here, it makes a change over there. That keeps things running a little better. Far better than all of that, we can manage everything from the cloud directly. Now, that of course has some caveats with it, and that of course has some things that you need to prepare for and, and look at, and that's all based on your particular use case. So I'm going to think about this, uh, this scenario, as basically I've got file servers today, and I've got those file servers presenting shares to my users in my environment. They could be user personal shares, they could be application shares, and I've got all of those shares presented today. I need to modernize this so I can reduce my cost and I want to get to a platform that allows me to expand in the future virtually without limits. That's what Azure Files can do. Now, additionally, on top of that, we're going to talk about Azure Files Sync, which is the new, newly GA feature that uh, we're going to address primarily in this video. But for a good understanding of all of that, first, let's look at a storage account. So here I've got a storage account that I've stood up for this particular scenario. And this storage account currently has no data in it. So no blobs, no files, no tables, no queues. Okay, so I'm going to create a new file share. We'll call this share AA-AFS. And we'll make the quota five terabytes. There you go, just like that, share's done. Okay, I set up the quota the way I wanted. The share has been populated. Now I just have to map this share to a system and we're ready to rock. So that's great, let's make another one. And we'll make this one one terabyte. And we'll make another one. And we'll make this one two terabyte. Okay, so just like that, I'm spinning up shares like crazy. So now I've got this file server essentially set up in the cloud. Now I need to get some data in there and I need to set up my Azure Sync agent. 
So for Azure Sync, we're going to go to the marketplace, add, and we're going to say uh, Azure Files Sync. And it gives a little blurb here of what Azure Files Sync does. So Azure Files Sync allows me to have all of my data stored in the cloud in a file share. And that can be protected and backed up by Azure Backup. Everything can be scripted. I can have snapshots, manage it just like a normal file share. But additionally, I get an agent running on servers on-prem locally. And that agent will allow the server to act like a hot file cache. Now, what is a hot file cache? Well, let me show you something. So I have OneDrive on my system. And inside OneDrive, I've got my downloads folder. Inside downloads, I've got this file, and this file has a little cloud icon there. Now these other files have green check marks. So if I were to look at the file size here, it says that the size of the file is 24 kilobytes, but then the size on disk is also 24 kilobytes. This guy is different. His size on disk is zero. That's because this file is tiered to the cloud. In Azure File Sync, as files are not used, they archive, they tier off to the cloud. With my local file here that I have through OneDrive, which uses a similar mechanism, the size on disk is currently zero. If I double click the file, however, it starts to download the file. And I'm not actually gonna install it, but now that I've asked for the file, now it downloads, so it streams locally. Now the file size on disk is the same as the size, and I can use the file actively. Now think about this in terms of something like video. If I have a video file, the video is two gigabytes, and I open it and I play the first five seconds, or I scrub to another point in the video and I play 10 minutes, I haven't downloaded the whole file. I've downloaded the parts of the file. So it makes streaming files very, very quick and efficient. And it also means it takes up less space on-prem. Less space means there's less I need to maintain. Less I need to maintain means I don't need as many servers. It means that I can do more with less. Now, that also means that my servers that I have on-prem don't have to be fully fledged out, full bore, big, large, hunkin' file servers. They can be treated now like a hot files caching server. The data all lives in Azure Files. The server provides local users quick access. As they use files, they're pulled down from the cloud, they're made hot on the server, accessible to the user just as locally as it possibly could be. But as the users stop accessing those files, they just tear off to the cloud and you just have a little pointer sitting here, taking up no space at all. That's the beauty of Azure File Sync. So let's create one. Okay, and that'll spin up in a second. So now that we've got that spinning up, and there it is. So let's take a look inside here. So what we have here is you have a getting started section, shows you a little video about what it is and what it does. And basically there's two steps. First, you register your servers, and that's by installing the Azure File Sync agent. And then second, you set up a sync group and you attach that registered server to that sync group. And that sync group is mapped to a share. So let's create our sync group here, and we'll say this is AA sync group one, and we'll select our storage account that this will be a part of, and then we'll make this the AFS share. So there's our sync group. Now in that sync group, we want to add a cloud endpoint. This is our storage account. And then we need that registered server. So in order to do that, we have to go to that registered server. We've got to download the sync agent and install that on a server. Okay, so let's go to one of our servers. And this guy is in Azure. This is our 2019 jump box that we had in the cloud. So, and this does not have to be installed on a specific server or a special class of server. Any old server can do this. Now, once you install the agent, which I already have done, you'll get under your start menu, a sync updater, and then the agent will check for an update, hit okay, and then it's going to present you with this wizard. 
And this wizard, you go to sign in, it's going to have you sign into your Azure profile. And so I will pause while I sign in. Okay, so after our sign in is complete, we now have to choose our subscription, choose our resource group, and our sync service. And we hit register and we're asked to sign in again. So this was first to authenticate that you can talk to the sync service. Now we're setting up the, the actual server. Okay, so registration of our server was successful. So we hit okay. And we go back to our Azure portal. All right, so there you can see our server has been registered. And we go back to our sync group. And then we add a server endpoint. And now we have to give it a path. And this path would be on the local server that we're going to set up this share to sync to. So let's see, I've got this S drive here. And I've got this folder already set up. And I will enable cloud tiering, which is that feature that allows me to, to just treat the server like a hot file cache. If cloud tiering is disabled, then all of the data from the Azure file share will be synchronized across all of your servers. And I'm going to keep an unrealistic 98% free. Depends on your use case, depends on how much users need to access all the different files in the share. So you could have one server set up as 20% free because everyone's using that thing a lot, but another server in a remote office it needs to have 75% free. All right, so I'll hit create and now we're provisioning. And so what's happening here is this particular share is now being registered. So we're looking at this volume now since we enabled cloud tiering, which is a volume level feature. And the cloud tiering is going to look at the volume and say how much space is currently free on the volume. We need to keep 98% free space because that's what I set it to. All right, so this is currently pending. And you won't really see much on this end. There are a bunch of PowerShell commands you can use locally to see what's going on. But at this point, if we go back to our storage account and we go to Azure Files, you can see all the files are being set up and synchronized. Okay, so that's pretty much how easy it is. So you set up something locally, uh, you, you install the agent, you set up the cloud sync, create your sync groups, put your servers in the sync groups, and off you go. So I wanted to show you what another one that I had is. Okay, and these are currently at no activity because I just rebooted my, uh, my servers on-prem. They were off all night, so that's why there's no activity on my local servers. But essentially, I've created the same kind of thing. So I created a sync group for myself. I set up a couple servers, and inside there, I've registered them to all have a path. They do not have to have the same path. You could store them at different places. doesn't matter. And then what I did on top of that is I created a DFS namespace. So I set up the file shares here so you can get to my quote unquote corporate data. And that's my corporate file share, so to speak. And then I set up this other file share for my SAP application install. So you can install SAP or SAP HANA. Uh, so, and that's just what I'm using it for now. So you could set up pretty much anything. Now the beauty of this as well is that if we go back to my storage accounts in files here, so I've got that OneDrive quote unquote corporate data in one file share. SAP is another file share. So why is this useful? Well, see today there's currently a five terabyte limit in how large I can make a new file share. So if I go to here and I say, try to make it that big, it says, no, sorry, you can only make it up to five terabytes. So in my example of a 10 terabyte file server, am I out of luck? No, I'm not. With Azure File Sync, I can set up multiple shares and then I can map them all through Azure File Sync to the local server. And then I can share all of that data to my services local so I can present more than five terabytes to the end user. Okay, and it's all synchronized through the cloud. So now let's go back to this file share. So here I've got terabytes worth of file shares. So now I've mapped those or most of them to my sync groups. Okay, so I've got my Azure File Sync service that's in the East US region. I've got that mapped to these different sync groups. These sync groups, each one is five terabytes. And then I go back to 
apply VM and so they're mapped okay so I've got those user file shares I've got my root that has uh, thing one in my original OneDrive. I've got my SAP share all mapped onto my server and then companion mapped in the other servers. Okay, there you go, all the same mappings. And so now I've expanded my abilities beyond that limit. Okay, now think about this. I just set up the other file services for our Azure uh, Academy test. Imagine that this sync group here already had a bunch of servers in it. As I said, you could use this as a manner to treat your servers more like cows than pets. Meaning, I don't have to baby them. I don't have to patch them, maintain them, care for them, feed them. All I do when it comes time to patch the servers or something's wrong and I've got a troubleshooting issue, I don't have to troubleshoot it. I deploy a new server, stand it up, join it to the sync group, throw away the old one. I don't have to patch a server, I don't have to maintain a server, which means no downtime. Stand it up behind a DFS namespace, have all of your file servers presented that way to the end user, so the namespace, the share names don't change. Build new file servers in place, throw away the old ones, don't bother patching them, don't bother troubleshooting them. They become a hot file cache that is disposable. Okay, and you're managing your file services now from the cloud. All right, so this has been talking about Azure File Sync, a really hot topic that uh, I think a lot of people are pretty excited about right now, a way to leverage cloud storage file-based services and stop having to manage and maintain your file servers on-prem. Please give me some comments, like the video, subscribe, and let me know what it is that you would like to talk about next. And we'll see you next time.